Let's talk briefly about ableism. Ableism may be a new word for some folks, but it's an important word, and it's a word with decades of history, like racism, sexism, and classism. Talking about ableism helps us understand some of the unjust ways that our society is organized. And it's a word that many disabled people use to define their experiences. So ableism is discrimination in favor of able-bodied people. It's prejudice against disabled people, and it's the disregard for the needs of disabled people. So at a basic level, ableism is a systemic oppression of a group of people based on what they can or can't do with their bodies or with their minds. And remember, disability can be visible or it can be invisible, but both of these are very real, especially for the person experiencing them. So ableism includes things like the expression of hate for people with disabilities, physical violence against people with disabilities, denial of accessibility, so that's things like not creating accessible buildings or media, rejection of disabled applicants for things like jobs and housing, institutional discrimination such as benefits programs that keep disabled people in poverty, and subtler things like everyday language that relegates disabled people to the realm of less than human or somehow inherently bad or unworthy, like using the words retarded or lame to deride people, things, or situations. Ableism is generally characterized by the belief that disabled people need to be fixed or that they cannot function as full members of society. As a result of these assumptions, disabled people are generally thought of as abnormal rather than as members of a distinct minority community. If you're interested in the idea of the oppression of people with disabilities, and you're academically inclined, you can even get a university degree in disability studies. Or you can check out the Disability History Association and disability studies conferences, or something more specific like a deaf studies focus conference, or a degree in deaf studies. Or maybe you prefer to learn on your own, in which case you could just read some of the many books that discuss the history and nature of ableism. Or maybe you're like me and prefer personal narratives over studying history. And if that's the case, then you may just want to check out some of the many blogs in which disabled people discuss their experiences. So able Ableism can obviously be accidental, and I think super often it is. We all say things without always understanding the impacts our words are going to have. And the same goes for so much of what we do and what we create. We often just don't have the time or have the tools and knowledge to think everything all the way through. And that's totally fair, and we all make mistakes. But ultimately, once something's been pointed out to us, and it's then on our radar, and in this case, once someone points out our ableism, whether intentional or not, there's no good excuse not to make a real attempt at accessibility or reducing the negative impacts of our words and actions. So, so what if Google doesn't mean to make inaccessible products? Or if organizers, such as activists and politicians alike, don't mean to choose inaccessible venues, or that I didn't really know what I was invoking when I called something I hated lame. Once someone is generous enough to point out to us that we're harming or excluding entire groups of people, especially someone from the group that we're harming, there's just no good reason to keep doing it. And obviously not all ableism is unintentional. There are countless examples of people knowingly and willingly discriminating against disabled people. From things as simple as people defending their so-called right to use words like retarded and lame, even after hearing that these words harm other people. Speaking of which, when people strongly defend their usage of words like retarded and lame, and obviously everyone technically has the right to say whatever they want, it always baffles me a little bit. How hard is it to stop saying a couple of words? And when you weigh this minor effort against the harm that people are telling you those words cause? Doesn't it seem a little ridiculous to defend our technical right to say them? Anyway, back to non-accidental ableism. We've got the Canadian government arguing that they shouldn't have to make their courts accessible to disabled people. We've got politicians using misleading subtitles or no subtitles at all. And of course, countless inaccessibly constructed buildings. And we've got things like general everyday conversations that reinforce the idea that disabled people are less than human, inferior, incapable of full participation, or whatever else. And once you've got an eye for these types of things, unfortunately, you'll see them everywhere. And ultimately, ableism can kill, ranging from suicide by people who were bullied for their disabilities, to direct physical violence and murder, to so-called mercy killings by disabled people's parents or guardians. Disabled people face not only daily discrimination, but also direct physical violence and sometimes death because of their disabilities. And that is ableism. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say for now. Check out the links in the description for this video. You'll find some sources for things I've been talking about, as well as some blogs and other resources. Thanks for watching, and that is all for now.